أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم آتي الله آتي الرسول وأول الأمر منكم and always a reminder from myself أنا عبد كل عجيس ضعيف ومسكين وظالم وجهل and but for the grace of God grace of Allah زبجال that we are still in existence that Allah زبجال's infinite rahmah and mercy that we're not perfect people but we took a path towards perfection and that when we admit our weakness and our deficiencies then Allah is great and no human can claim greatness and the only human that came anywhere near greatness is the greatness of Sayyidina Muhammad and by virtue of Allah granting a label and a title, Khuluqul Azeem, that you are of a magnificent character. Allah gave his Sifat al Azeem that immense, that for <laughs> Azeem is only for Allah. And for Allah to use that adjective to describe the character of his most beloved creation the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad When me and you refer to Prophet with greatness and munificent character, it has a limit. But when Allah describes khuluqul azeem, not your salah is azeem, your fasting and siyam is immense. But Allah drawing our attention that I'm the only one who can use that adjective and I used it in reference to his holy character. And that Prophet's character is what distinguishes and sets him apart from all creation. That way then awliya and those whom follow these saintly guides and saintly paths and saintly schools of perfection and the stations of taming the beast from the animal kingdom to the heavenly kingdom. Imagine then those whom are not enrolled in this taming class then they remain animal kingdom, beastly characters. And this is all that we see that when, when we were young you go to the zoo and… Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And children, parents were ashamed of the character of the monkeys and the chimpanzees and the animals in the zoo because they do whatever they want regardless of who's watching and they can take their waste and throw it at the audience and the people because they're animals. But when humans begin to exhibit the same characteristic as the zoo then we don't know who's in and who's out of the zoo. Are those creatures in there to be safe? and they're safe from us means that this dunya became like a wild zoo as if the animals are thinking now, I think we're much safer in here, these people are crazy, wild. And imagine then with the foundation of crazy you add religious to it. Well that can be a very dangerous and, and explosive characteristic. So means then the foundation of everything that is being established by Almighty Allah the creator of, of all creation is that you have to have good khuluq and good character. 
And if you're a lover of the reality and lover of Sayyidina Muhammad take a path in which to have good character. And every day it's not all the, the laws that you're following and see if you're following all of them or not following them but every day to take an account of my character that was a kind, was a loving. Because everyone should know that where they fall in Islamic jurisprudence and, and the do's and don'ts of what Allah and God Almighty wants for us, we're always going to fall short. That's why as a shaykh or a teacher or a student of a shaykh we're saying always, an abdukal aji so da'if o miskin o zalim o jahl, I'm the first to admit my wrongs. I don't need somebody else to admit it for me, then I'm not going through that door. I'm going through the door to Allah is that I have problems. But Ya Rabbi I'm, I'm coming through your door of character that have mercy upon me because you've put into my heart to be soft, to have good character, to, to be in a way to be tolerant to all the immense oppression, immense agitation, I immense… we said now it's like wild animal kingdom to be patient and tolerant in the face of this wildness then requires more madad, more support from Allah continue to give me patience. And this is what then sets us apart and sets us free. That in these days of difficulty if your focus is all the rules, making sure you did them 100%, 100% correct, as much as you try you're still wrong. And as much as you try to follow all those rules you still came short. Don't put your back only on that as your support because then people give up, say, I can't pray like you guys, I just can't do it, I'm quitting this path. I can't do this, I can't do that and give every excuse of the nafs because the nafs knows how difficult it is. Somebody emailed, oh I've sinned so much I'm going to stop it all, take my life, you're crazy. Don't email like that because then we have to send that to the medical file which this needs immediate medical help and this is not our specialty to get involved when you want to harm yourself. But it is a shameful condition that to think that the rules are so hard and that so, so difficult that you can't follow therefore you have to harm yourself. Then you didn't find and you didn't hear the immense amount of mercy that is being taught here. That come, come, come a thousand times regardless how many times you broke your vow. That Allah is not looking for perfection, He created us sinful. If He wanted perfection He would have made all of us Prophets of Allah But He made us to be the Indians so we follow the chiefs. He made us to be common people, sinful people so that we would be in need of His perfected person in the personality and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad That one He creates perfect is the positive, He's the nucleus of this entire creation. And His positive reality is what's drawing creation. And by means of just understanding one atom we understood the entirety of creation because sometimes people can make things so complicated, so big that it, in one simple understanding you can understand it. All this creation one atom what we call Adam, Adam, Adam means person, one atom. There's a nucleus and that Sayyidina Muhammad and the, the power inside because you can't say the nucleus is Allah because it has a location. That's a sh big shirk, that's a big problem in your usul. So we can never give a direction to Allah or likeness, oh Allah is like an atom, stuff in that. Oh, it's millions of different creations we don't understand. The nucleus, the power of positivity 
is the one whom Allah describes Khuluq al azim and that we taught you by Shadeed al Quwwah that somebody with immense power, the one whom has all power of universes is describing, Allah describing that you've been taught by one whom is immense in power, describing Allah's personality, His Divinely reality to Himself, that you're the nucleus. This is how the awliya come into our hearts and translate for us. So that one nucleus, it's the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and we are its electrons and electrons are negative. What? So that you reset yourself. Those people whom emailing like that, did you really think you were positive? Did you really think you were like a saint and, and you thought that you were above saints and that you were like a, in the station of prophets? You didn't know that you're sinful and deviant and, and every crazy type of characteristic? Of course, it's the way Allah created it, that you're all electrons. But if you don't know where you're supposed to be orbiting, then you're in trouble. Because you're like an electron just out there flowing in the universe but in reality you're not because you are in a circumference, you are circumambulating but you just don't know it. So when the hadith of this reality comes, who knows himself will know his Rabb, arafa nafsahu, arafa rabbahu. This is Prophet talking to your atoms. That if you know your inner power, your Rabb, because Rabb is not in heaven nor on earth, I'm not in heaven, I'm not on earth. Another hadith for people who, who love to say we don't speak about hadith, but the same hadith Allah is describing, I'm in the heart of my believer. You take that reality to its atomic level and then Allah is describing. You're an electron, you're negative by your nature. I created you in a perfection, you came onto this earth and you've been negatively charged. And that when we talked about the realities of energy, if you don't study energy and spirituality you are lost in the last days. You are completely lost in the last days. It has to be through the understanding of energy and light. And that when you understood you're an electron and that you're negative, then you have to know what is your orbit because every electron has a nucleus. And that what is positive in my life that drawing me? At first they say, Allah no problem, they're right. But marifa and the way of Gnosticism is then Allah says, it's okay say me but I want you to look deeper because I have no partner and I have no likeness. But I am the power that resides within this power that I'm asking you to draw near to. Then in their path of marifa and Gnosticism they came and they said that the prophetic soul is the nucleus of our existence. Amana Rasul and that all the Prophets of Allah are within that nucleus and Allah didn't make any two nucleuses. He says, there's no soul of any Prophet created to call people to anything other than Allah So there's not another Prophet out there calling, come to this God and another Prophet calling to that God. Allah said, no they all came from the same nucleus and calling everybody, all the electrons back, come back into your orbit. Direct yourself to your reality, the power within your being. Direct yourself into your center of power. And that that Divinely light of Allah that has no partner, it emanates in the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah So then the nucleus of our existence is the prophetic station and prophetic lights. And in its oneness that there is nothing like unto it. That Allah didn't make me and you of that reality, 
made us of a lesser reality so that we are in need of that positive energy. And so our spiritual path is to come to know that. And when I come to know that, that I have to find that inner power, that inner power of positivity and that by virtue of that I know that I'm negative and therefore I repent daily. Astaghfirullah nazeem wa tubu laik. So <coughs> the tariqahs have what we call etiquettes because they know realities. So some people say, oh where you got this? It's all in the seerah of Prophet it's in all of the usul of and the fiqr. That every day at fajr you make istighfar. Why? Because you know you're an electron and that I have to give off the negative charges and I make istighfar, astaghfirullah lazeem wa tubu ilayk, astaghfirullah lazeem by Allah's greatness of al azim and that He's the one to forgive me. As a way of asking forgiveness the negative charges are being dropped and we're moving closer towards the positive energies. And then our circumvallation becomes faster in the Divine the Presence. These are the etiquettes that they give when other people say, why do you have to do that? Who said you have to do that? Don't do it. Stay out there as an electron orbiting in an infinite dark space. And when you take your last breath, you'll be in that dark space for all of eternity. You believed in nothing, you circumvallated nothing and you end up where? Nothing. But if perchance we're right and all these hadiths are directing us to this power and this reality, they start to meditate. That my inner core, my inner light, my Lord, that you have no power, you've, you have no, no partner, there's nothing like unto you and that your powers with the prophetic realities let their light and their guidance and their love emanate within my entire being. And that I make my etiquette and my awrads and my wazifas and I'm asking astaghfirullah lazeem wa tubu laik and all of the different etiquettes that are on the apps. Read this, read this, read this, why? To let off all the negative charges. And when you let off the negative charges you free yourself of the bond that it's trying to make and to bring us down in our charge and in our energy and as a result of that you let off the negativity and you spin faster around the positivity. Our life is about that circumvallation. And the apex of our journeys on the twelfth month what we call Hajj, a movement, a hijra and a pilgrimage to that ocean of reality. But in every day and in every moment when we're doing our etiquettes and making istighfar and asking for forgiveness keeping ourself in wudu means people hear our talks and maybe they think it's philosophy until you get hit with pain and you get hit with different energies and as a result of getting hit with these energies you begin to understand that something coming towards you. Keep yourself washed, keep yourself with your taweez. This is the immensity of, of something trying to make itself positive in an ever darkening world. So every time it moves more negatives are coming onto it. Why? To slow it down, stop. They want to stop the spin of the electron. This is the game that's happening. Prophet is sending a signal, circumambulate faster, come towards me. Make your durood, make your salawat, make one praising, Allah sends my light to shine onto you, to draw you nearer to me. This is a, these are these hadiths understood in this scientific way. And the negative force sees any type of positivity, cling to it because it's devoid of your opportunity. Devils don't have an ability to circumambulate the reality of Prophet They were not given that energy, they're vampires. Means what? 
The vampire is in con continuous need to feed. So we said fantasy movies teach you big realities. So why every vampire movie, this guy's got to eat all the time, voraciously. Who's that hungry? Why when you become so negative, you're so hungry? Because Allah is giving a symbolism. They have no more barakah and they have no more blessings. Their every movement is to feed. Barakah and blessings in your life is that when you eat with blessings, you're no longer hungry because a blessing came into you. The calories didn't do it. It's all those blessings and mercy and grace that comes into the food, makes you to be content. Because there are people who survive in life with very little to eat. But if, they're, if they have grace and Divine love, God makes them to be content with what little they eat or how much greatness they eat. But the vampire and demonic and negative energies, they can never get full with no blessings. So as a result, they're always in search of a food source. So negative energy feeds on your positive energy. So now I'm comprised of billions and trillions of electrons. I touch this, it just pulled my energy field. I have this now in, in all these science books that are coming out. I don't know what they called that, it was an electromagnetic pulse they're describing of the energy radiating from humans and the, the movement of electrons of pulling them and dispensing them. So since I'm not going to be technically correct for people who are watching, just imagine you have positive energies and depleting negative energies and the scientists see it now. They see that you have an ability to pull positives and lose immense amount of positive energy. You touch a negative device, it pulls your positive energies, it pulls your electrons, it pulls everything. You, you, you touch technologies, you touch anything that's been created by mankind, you go to the mall, you get zapped by all these energies. So what happens is that you're depleting and you're taking on the negative charge and losing your, po your positive charge. So the same scientists said that because they don't know religious realities, but they saw that if you go and pet a cat, it actually recharges your energy. And they found that the, the ionization or electrons on the cat, for example, has such a strong energy source that they saw that when people held them, hugged these animals, immediately charged back up their energy, the creature drops and goes back out into nature and recharges itself. It knows how to recharge its energy. Then they saw that if you walked barefoot out on the grass, they saw that you recharge your energy again. So they were, they were witnessing scientifically that humans are an energy being and they're continuously in need to recharge their energy. They got near a tree and sat under a tree, immediately the tree gave its energy to that human and recharged them. The human went back to their computer and again depleted their energy. So it means that this is an entire energy process. When we understood that we're trying to circumambulate and make our whole life about this nucleus because that which you circumambulate is the focus of your life. If you circumambulate your car, your business, your money, your bank accounts, well then that's the entire focus of your heart, that becomes it for you. And that becomes your Qibla, that becomes that which you are directing your entire energy being towards. So they come to teach us, no, no, your, your nucleus and your reality is the Divinely Presence, La ilaha illallah, that is a hidden treasure in Muhammadun Rasulullah because Allah has no direction, 
but you can find him in Sayyidina Muhammad It's all hadith. As a result we circumambulate this reality, it's the focus of our reality, it's what we teach, it's what we learn of realities, it's that we make the associations and the praisings of Allah the salawats upon Sayyidina Muhammad as a result it's an energy and a positive energy that dresses us and our life is then building that energy. At the same time the shaykhs taught that you're continuously attacked by negative energy. Your life is then understanding that. You built your energy, you touch the computer, you better have wudu. So, I didn't know how to make a ritual washing. Well the ritual washing was your safeguard that as soon as you have to relieve yourself or lose your cleanliness and your, your state of ritual purity, you lost the shield of energy and a force field around you because water has an immense power and if you don't have water Prophet described for us, take clean soil and make tayammum. Why? Because that clean soil can also negate a very fierce fire that negative energy tries to put upon people. So they keep themselves in wudu, they keep their taweez, ruqya, they keep the du'as and the, the names of Allah and prayers and, and the names of holy people upon themselves. They do everything that Allah has asked of them as a result they're in a continuous battle with negativity. If they don't take those safeguards what happens? They become more negative, more negative, more negative until the demonic energy stops the person from even circumambulating and they begin to say, I can do no more and I'm no longer interested in existence. And that's the negative energy, that's all the negativity. And we said that if you think negative on top of all of this, you have a power of manifestation. God gave to us a power to manifest. If you say and think negative, the angels say, Ameen and therefore it begins. Oh, everything around me is bad. The angel said, Ameen, immediately black clouds are over your head all day long. I'm never going to find work. You're right because the angel said, yes, the rizq that was coming to you will be pushed away because it's your will. You're using your will. You didn't surrender your will to Allah's will because Allah has no will for that to be your case. But humans are their worst enemy. The tariqahs are teaching manners. Many hear it, may even be writing it but mainly think it's a philosophy. This can't be me, oh it will be you because everyone gets tested by Allah You touch one thing wrong and you get zapped and retrace yourself, how you got zapped? Maybe you didn't do the etiquettes, you didn't do the recitations to push away negativities, you didn't keep wudu and continuous state of ritual purity. You didn't have your taweez that time and you say, oh I have my taweez in my wallet, it's not supposed to guard your money. I have the, the taweez in the car, that's good so you don't get in an accident. But upon the personality and the body, all of the armament because this is a full-fledged battle with shaitan. When the servant is prepared and enters the world at every moment like a battle with shaitan, then they have a push and they can push back the negativity. Once they become positive, they understood the negativities, they now can begin to meditate and contemplate. We talked about the reality of Ya and the immensity of the oceans of knowledge. That when Allah want to bestow just the Ya upon the servant, Grant them from the oceans of yaqeen and certainty and Allah gives to them like a little package that 
instead of teaching, say how, I don't know what you call in computers like a super pack, you know, like a zip file. If you think like knowledge is and Divinely knowledge comes where the angel's going to come to you, oh the meaning of noon, the meaning of qamar, the meaning, the, each word they're going to come to you and say each word and each word and each word, it will take a lot lifetime. But what if somebody came and said that all these words are 28 letters, I'm going to zip file from alif to ya in this ya. Because alif, is on this, that camera, what's that? Alif to ya. Allah give them a zip file with every letter, like an email into your soul that you reach sincerity, you're struggling with yourself. How we began? We know you're not perfect and you better be the first one to admit you're not perfect. Because if you come to Allah pretending like you're perfect, He's going to expose everything. That nothing going to open for that servant. So they taught this path, be nothing, say you're nothing. If Allah grants sincerity, it's a zip file, comes with all the way from alif to ya. So all the letters, their secrets which are infinite. That zip file will be deposited into your soul. And as you meditate and contemplate, Allah will open the seen of Ya Seen. When they meditate and contemplate, the seen will begin to open that zip file. But this is for the one whom inner reflection the one whom meditates, the one whom breathes and takes care of their energies, the one whom meditates and contemplates, my good character is what will save me. Not my perceived righteousness or that I'm truthful or I'm on truth and I'm, I'm doing everything right, your character is the only thing that will save you. For if your character is true, and Allah accepts your good character, He grants sincerity. And the gift of sincerity is certainty. And the Ya comes into the soul. And every time they meditate, Allah opens the secret, the sir, which is the seen. The seen is like a W in Arabic and it is the secret. It's the light of every secret and it's the secret of every light that Allah is going to bestow upon the soul, gift of Prophet One ocean, ilmu yaqeen, the knowledge is of certainty because now Allah is granting this, the servant certainty. That every time they sit in the associations of certainty, <clears throat> if they have that zip packet the zip drive that Allah deposited, every time they're writing these fountains of realities, it begins to unfold and open more realities for the servant. They write it and as they're writing it, it more understanding is coming to them. And later they can go back at their notes or later they can watch the video in more detail, slow the speed. And as they're writing it and they look and they meditate, they can pull more. Because every letter opens with its phonic sound. We said Allah given information of an alif to a servant. But a servant may meditate and look at the alif and in their heart they can unpack and unzip the alif even deeper until it opens up alif. Alif, Lam, Fa. 
because every, every letter has from its sound, its sound is opening even deeper. So it means that this is then infinite. Something that opened once can open now three, from three can open up to nine and layers are infinite in their capacity of knowledge. So they have to sit and eat from the tables of ilmu yaqeen and their whole life is meditation and contemplation. Not deep for hours but they did it consistently, consistently until it's a second nature for them that as soon as they enter into association they connect their heart and they can make their connection. And as a result of that connection the teaching begins, they're picking up the ilmu yaqeen and the knowledges and the realities. And as a result the second line of that W that's seen, Ainu yaqeen, these are the Ain, the Arabic Ain which is the vision of certainty. But Ain is also Alim and knowledges that Allah grant the servant ancient knowledges, Mahyalam, that which you did not know. And maybe nobody on earth knows but a handful or maybe nobody knows at all from the living on this earth. These are not all knowledges from this earth but knowledges from seven heavens and they only achieved it by their Ain. And it's the eye of the inner heart not the eye of the outer that if they tame the outer heart, the outer eye, the inner eye will begin to open within their heart. If you use the physical eyes only you darken the inner eye. That's all the shaitan wants. The sense you use will offset the other sense. The one whom uses their physical eyes too much, why shaitan wants that? So that your inner eye never will open. When you use the sense of the physical, the spiritual dies. So then he makes another phone. Then if the phone wasn't bad enough make a watch, if the watch wasn't bad make a computer, make a TV, make anything so that your physical eyes never shut off. Now they want to put it on a mask that you're just going to sleep with that 24 hours a day. Why? So that you'll have no inner eye activity. God forbid that you should shut your eyes for five minutes to rest. As soon as you close your eyes what happened? Your inner eye has an ability to revitalize and that's why Allah has decreed from one of its realities sleep. And nobody cannot sleep. So they Russians had experiments of people for no sleep. They say within five days they went mad, mentally crazy mad for 10 days they were eating each other. They had an inability to distinguish right from wrong, truth from false, completely mad. Means Allah put within our system you cannot keep those eyes open. One day, two day, three day crack addict, four days, five days but 10 days you're completely mad. You'll be eating people because you just your system will go off. It's not meant for it. So the great neutralizer is that Allah granted I created sleep so that you can recharge your inner eye. As soon as you sleep your inner eye and inner vision is recharging and the one who can mimic that state of sleep while alive and awake is the one then who can master the state of the inner eye. That they don't want to only do this when they sleep, they don't only want when they sleep you know, to have the inner eye be active but in their wakeful time they partition their time and they sit and connect their heart. At Fajr time connect your heart, listen to Surat Yaseen from Mawlana Shaykh Nazim's voice, connect your heart with Mawlana Shaykh and practice opening your inner eye of the heart and as a result it becomes stronger and more enticing to close your outer eye. 
If you do it long enough, do it strong enough, the inner eye becomes so powerful that they lose the taste of their outer eye. We gave an example from Pluto. My son says, not Pluto, that was in Disney, Plato. <laughs> but for us Plato, Pluto was all the same. He came up with the story of the cave. This is not the cave of our caves, it's the cave of ignorance. To describe the analogy of the world and Sayyidina Jalaluddin Rumi Qaddasallahu Siru came the same and said, prison, that this life is a prison and everybody is its prisoners. You've become content with your prison. You look to a wall with a fire behind you or a source of light behind you and all you see are shades and you're happy with that. And you made a whole life interpreting those shadows and you saw nothing of its reality. So what you see of this physical world and say, this is amazing, it's but a shadow in a cave or in a prison. But the real cave of the Divine and the horizons of the heaven require the shutting of the eye. When you begin to train to shut the eye, and you begin to meditate to open the inner eye of your heart. As soon as you begin to practice the opening of the inner eye of the heart and the knowledges of reality means what? You're being fed your coordinates in your GPS. If you say, I'm just going to do my inner eye but know nothing of realities, you're going to become corrupt because you're going to make crazy imaginal understandings with no foundation. The knowledge of certainty gives the legal foundation for what your eye will open up. Means I heard these realities, this is what I'm trying to open in my, my vision. I meditate, I meditate, I heard about this reality of the light of Prophet the reality of the nucleus, the electrons and as soon as I begin to meditate and connect my heart they start to show me the visual of that reality. Without the knowledge the vision would become corrupt. You make up left and right and mostly outside of Islam. So you turn on TikTok some guy's making weird movements. And then, who? Where's that from? Because they picked up here and there, put some Hindu on it, some Buddha on it, and put some other things on it like it's a food dish. No, Islam has an immense foundation. And all coming from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad by big ulama. To do this zikr, do these realities, do these haqqaiqs. And any of these teachings, go back to your knot, you'll see the teaching right in the knot. That is its foundation and its dalil. As a result of those knowledges, like if you take even a knot, the sharif, and then meditate, jani rahma, jani rahma. And you meditate, even the understanding of the knot will open up. Because it's all the words of awliya. That's why Abu Dhabi's. Kalam from awliyas, you sit and you meditate what they're talking about of seeing the lights of Ahmad and the lights are going here. These are all from haqqaiqs. So when they sit and they meditate with these knots which were the, the writings of big awliya, don't worry about the singer who's singing it, it's just merely the flute but the one who blew the reality is the one who's important. The one who gave the reality out, the way in which it's conveyed is not the importance to argue about who's pure and not pure. But the reality of these kalam and these words of awliya, you meditate on them. And the immensity of them begin to blossom. That's why the ilm is first. The one who has no ilm and meditates is corrupt and fasiq, becomes something all over the place. And they come and say all sorts of unimaginable things. So it has to be based on a foundation of Islamic understanding, the ilmu yaqeen, then they meditate, aynu yaqeen. What opens for them from Allah Haqq yaqeen. Allah makes it to be true. 
So when the shaykhs talk, not from a book, their whole life was to take these knowledges, expand these knowledges because their connection with their shaykh through much more than what they were speaking in public was coming into their heart. As a result of their meditation and their ayn, these knowledges were expanded. Allah granted them a haqq that they witnessed it, then they witnessed it, then they witnessed it. Every time they witnessed it, it was burned onto their soul, a page within their kitab. They're the original yahu. Ya is knowledges from who? Yahu. When we're doing the zikr of Yahu, Yahu, is you're asking Allah's ancient knowledges from the reality of this who to send this ocean into the heart of the servant. Allah makes it to be a haqq because it's engraved, they witnessed it, they witnessed it, they witnessed it. As a result their book are all of the witnessings within these knowledges and their visions. We pray that Allah dress us from the realities of Ya Seen and that His rida and satisfaction be upon us and that the intercession of Sayyidina Muhammad continuously be upon us and that Allah's immense grace and rahmah take away difficulties and shortcomings from us for the sake of this love inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.